Before we get into today's show, it is brought to you by Speaking Finance. If you're in the market for a car loan, Speaking Finance can take care of all your needs, whether it's a new ute to carry the tools or something more flashy to roll into Marvel Stadium with Speaking Finance can sort you out. Steve, who's down there, is a diehard Don supporter and will make sure you're looked after. Murdy, you're in the market for a new set of wheels, aren't you? Maybe Steve can help you out. Yeah, I actually just got some, Rob. Unfortunately, it would have been great. Like, yeah, could have could have really used some finance. You probably could have, probably could have. Uh, that's need spe- all the help I can get, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> you do need that help. Uh, that is Speaking Finance. Visit the website, speakingfinance.com.au. All right, let's start the show, boys. I mean, it's nothing new that I'm the one who's carrying this podcast anyway, <laughs> so... I simply must play. There's nothing more likely than a bloke who takes a hanger, miss and a fetch up yeah. straight after it. Yeah, give it a listen. Acting as if it's like a normal thing to do with salt and vinegar chips. I'm, I'm in a mood, Rob. How is this the little bonus content of Kevin Shady? Who are we playing this week? Who cares? I right. reckon I'm, I'm zero for three with creating segments at the moment. <laughs> the love of God, don't know Scarlet. An early flight to Sydney, a very slow start, a spirited fight back, but another narrow loss for the Dons. This is The Sash, definitely not the official podcast of the Essen Football Club. I'm your host, Rob, here and with you. And joining me at Sash HQ for a Monday is Murdy. Murdy, mate, how are you? Yeah, not bad, Rob. Would have been, uh, obviously, it would have been good to get the result on Saturday, but... It's it's funny. It's um, I f- I'm feeling a very different sentiment being echoed by you know almost universally amongst mm. Essendon supporters at the moment. Where, yeah, it's it's a very strange feeling to be coming off a few you know very close losses, but mm. um, people seem to be generally quite buoyed by what they're seeing by the side at the moment. So, you obviously hate losing, um, but yeah, I think. You know, if you look at how guys like um, Perkins are performing, um, some of the kids, but Ooh. also, you know, for me, guys like um, obviously Hindy's one of them. He mm. just he's just playing incredible footy for us. Um, you know, Redmond is just playing the footy with you know we've seen probably three or four years ago from mm. him and hasn't really been there um, since then up until this year. So there's a lot of positives at the moment, but yeah, obviously it would have been good to take a win. Yeah, uh, the effort is there, the intensity is there for the most part, the execution, the skills are not. Um, but there's something, you know, we all came into this year wanting to see a game plan, we want something to get around, wanting to see, see uh, you know, a direction going forward that we haven't really seen for the last sort of 24 months or so. That is there. People can see that. People are excited. The team is young. Um, I do also think that a lot of the Essendon supporters are quite just like, you know, they've accepted the reality of where the list is at, knows that it's it's a development year, and I think everyone's calm. Mm. Like, I'm calm. I'm a lot less stressed on a Monday. Like, I watched the game on Saturday with a couple of mates, so I wouldn't say they're as fanatical Dons fans. Like, they're Dons fans, but, you know, they'll miss a few games here or there. They're not going to all of them. And they were getting so around the game just because it was close. And they're like, why aren't you, like, why aren't you, like, you know, going crazy? I was just like, it's, it's all about the lessons, mate. Mm. We're learning. Mm. Kids are playing. I'm calm. I'm happy. Um, yeah, but I'm, you're right. There's a lot, a lot of positives to take out of it. I can't really echo those sentiments. <laughs> I watched, um, watched it with Ollie and Damo, and I know – yeah, I seriously scared Damo's dog for most of the day. Scared it into it's hiding. It's a then, very small dog. Um, it is a very small dog. I've almost killed it by sitting on it a number of times. So <laughs> it's already <laughs> shit scared of me. So <laughs> certainly didn't help that cause. But yeah, there was certainly there was a lot of weird shit that happened. To be honest, it was um, turkey noises in celebration for some reason. And yeah, it was weird. A lot of hysterical crying and laughing when um when Coxie and um and Jones <laughs> sorry not Jones Archie Perkins mm. kicked kicked those goals so it was weird scenes but um yeah it's certainly exciting watching the team play at the moment yeah it is very exciting it is very exciting um let let's let's just start with Archie Perkins cuz you know what I re- like l- the goal was awesome like we've all wanted to see it he went back he was calm he slotted the goal. It's a, it's a shame it wasn't in front of, you know, a big Essendon crowd. Obviously, there was plenty of Essendon supporters up there in Sydney, but it wasn't a packed MCG or mm. or Marvel. Um, but he's he, he got the monkey off his back. Yeah. As soon as the sun was, like, perfectly shining on his face as he was going back, and yeah. he just looked like – he looked like the golden god. And he was <laughs> like – He's, he's so going to kick it. Yeah. I just knew. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it was great in all seriousness. Like, he played such a rounded game, I thought. Mm. Um, 
to top off a fantastic game, I thought last week as well, um, where you know he's he seems to be so strong over the contest, and he just you know he might lose his feet if he's tumbling or something, but it's almost like he's a cat and he just mm. seems to regain his feet at Always. all times, yeah. um, which is such an – it's so crucial. And, you know, you see other guys a lot of the time, like Tip is one of them. Tip is a fantastic player, don't get me wrong, but, God, he loses his feet a lot. Yes. And it takes you out of the contest and it's, you know, it's one of the worst things you can do. Archie just doesn't he's, – he's really not – ever out of the contest mm. so um i think that's you know that's a huge thing to have at, at a at such a young age he's like one of those you know it's like in they're like the semi-inflatable dolls that like are weighted at the bottom and like you punch yeah, it yeah. and it just keeps coming back yeah, up yeah. it's like the punching yeah. ba- that's what he's like it's just like i'm down and i'm back up and i'm down and, yeah, I'm back and up it, again. it's funny because he doesn't like he's got decent size considering his age and obviously considering they didn't you know haven't played a whole lot in the last couple of years yeah. but by no means is he is he big out there um, so he, I think he does really well in the contest and he's obviously, um, you know, he, he looks like Tarzan and he plays like Tarzan, I think. So, yes. um, it's fantastic to see. One thing I really liked is the coaching panel, truck, carousel, Gia, whoever it may be, backing him in to start in the centre circle. Mm. And obviously we've seen at times throughout the season where we've had a player go down from the midfield group. Obviously this, this week it was Paco who did spend some time there. And they're backing him in as a first-year player. Um, go in there. Go in there. Go head-to-head with some of the great midfielders of the competition. Find the ball. Learn your craft. And, like, you know, the, the Brisbane game was an example where, like, you know, obviously Lockie Neal was much better than he was. But he doesn't look like he's out of his depth. And I can't remember – the last time I've seen an Essendon first year player starting in the centre circle, like for you know lengthy periods of the game. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I reckon John Worsfold had a fair bit to do with that because <laughs> he clearly hated first year players or hated <laughs> hated most young players. Um, if they ever got a shot, they were getting played out of position. And I mean, if they did get that shot, which we know was. Just so mm. few and far between, as we know with all the simply must plays like Francis. But yes, yeah, it is. It's a it's a great thing to see these kids actually getting a crack, and you know, like, you know, really having that confidence put into them. Um, you know, the coaching yep. group saying, you know, you're good enough to go with these guys. We're sticking you in there, and also just you know having that confidence to keep them in the team. And I know. A couple of weeks ago, the Anzac Day game, coming into that, I was thinking, you know, maybe it's time to rest Harry Jones. Yeah. You know, just give I him a spell it. in the twos. Don't – not a dropping or anything like that, but get, you know, get his hands on the footy. And then we saw the second half of that game, he took some really good marks and started to really look like it. And then the Carlton game, he obviously dominated. One and of their then, best, yeah. And then this one again. And I think, you know, since that first game, he's kicked something like eight goals straight from set shots. So – Um, you see what a bit of confidence can do in these guys. Mm. And I think Archie was almost, you know, he played a really good game against St Kilda. That's probably not a great game to judge someone on because we absolutely destroyed them. Yeah. But, um, you know, he was a bit quieter after that. So it's really good to see that he's he's playing in the guts. He's got that confidence from the coaches and Mm. it seems like he's really starting to believe in his own ability. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's all you want. That's all you want from March. Um, someone else who I want to sing some praise to is Aaron Francis. I thought yeah. Frank had a really good game. He's really starting to string some good football together. Yeah, and we've seen very inconsistent Francis. We've seen him injured. We've seen him have other issues and really struggle to be out in the field. But he like he looks like he's really into it. Mm. Um, he is someone who... I, I guess a term that some people might use is a bit of a resting bitch face sometimes, or he might look a little bit downtrodden, whereas he looked energized. He looked fired up. He looked like he really wanted to attack the footy. Um, there was obviously that, I can't remember which was the player it was, but basically picked it up, sidestepped someone, and then started the rebound where it all started with him. We went coast to coast and scored the goal. Mm. Um, and when you've got two of the great Essendon haters and Jared Healy and Darren Brereton singing your praises – um, you know you've done something good. Um, we know that at times he might, might get beaten by the absolute monster key forwards, but I think as the, the development of the, the guys around him comes along, um, he's really starting to be our you know rebounder player, along with a Jordan Ridley as well. Yeah, I, I think he's just 
um, I think he's still learning the craft a lot because yeah. I, I don't think he's played all that much time as a – he certainly hasn't played much time as a key defender. And mm. I think if you saw his game against Buddy Franklin a few weeks back, he re- he was the one – you know, largely because of injuries, but he was the only player playing on Buddy. Yeah. And for me, he, he beat him up until probably the last quarter where, you know, Buddy did his thing and managed to get a bit on top of him. But, mm. you know, if he's playing on someone like Buddy, and Buddy's a monster, you know, he's yes. not as mobile as he used to be. He's still mobile, but he's doing that shutdown job. And I think he got a lot of confidence out of that. And so mm. I think he's still learning. You know, the reality is that Francis is, you know, he's six foot three, six foot four. He's not huge. He's lost a whole lot of weight and he needed to do that to get fit to play footy. And so when he's playing on these guys, because I think he can go with those monsters, but yeah. you know he's still learning and what he has to be able to do is he has to be able to sit off them and then mm. hit the contest with pace. And I think one of my biggest, biggest criticisms of Francis has been that he'll go into one of those contests, he might be the third man up, um, and it's one of those contests where if you're going up, you've got to keep the ball in front of you. You've got to make sure you kill the ball, mm. hit it to the boundary, because if you let that ball go out the back, it's putting a goal, yeah. you've left your man, it's going to be a goal. A lot of the time I've seen in the past, the past couple of years, he's, he's let it go over the back. He's crashed the pack, it's gone over the back. He, mm. hasn't, he hasn't affected the contest. And yeah. now what I'm seeing from him is he's coming across, he's taking the mark, he's much, he's much better at picking when to leave his man and when not to. Mm-hmm. He's much more accountable with his man as well. And I think he's a lot more confident the other way. He's actually being a lot better on the, on the offense too. So, yeah. And yeah. he was one that I, you spoke about a fair bit that – Often when he might get a mark or, you know, a free kick or whatever, he was very prone to the lazy, just off a step, hit someone. But he seems to be taking a bit more time with it. Or even, like you said, just fully attacking and going for it and being able to hit that really good pass. Because we all know he's had the kicking ability. Like, there's a reason he got, you know, picked at such an early pick is because of his, his kicking. Um, great penetration. He can hit someone from distance with a really strong, fast kick. But we know in the past he's been quite – he's been lazy at times mm. uh, and he might get it and just take a step back off a step and then that's when we'll see the turnover. And when a lot of pl- people, you know, Essen fans included, were sort of saying, I don't think he's that good, he turns over the ball too much, that was why it does look like they're trying to work that out of his game, which is which is something we want to see. Because if he's going to be a part of, you know, the future of this team, which looks like he is, um, that's something you've got to stop doing. Yeah, one, one thing I've noticed on those kicks is that – it's almost like he's given a license to do it from a certain point on the field. And then, you know, the ones that really hurt us are obviously if he's trying to do it from a back pocket or even on a half back flank, you're trying to open up the other side of the ground, you're going into the centre of the ground. Yeah. Then if you don't hit that target, it's such a high risk kick. If you don't hit it, we're fucked. Yes. It'll be a goal. <laughs> so what I'm like, and I mean, on the weekend he missed, you know, there was one kick, I think he kicked it to Perkins at centre forward. And he didn't quite get him. Like, it was a half volley in the end. Yeah. But it was a relatively low-risk kick because he was kicking it to our centre forward. He wasn't kicking it, you know, into the centre of the ground. Yeah, the back he 50, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't kicking out of defence. So, um, I'm fine with him going for those kicks if he's up yeah, the field. absolutely. But realistically, I think, you know, you've really got to be able to... I think you've got to be able to play the percentages as a defender. And that's just something that he's learning. I think, you know, someone like, obviously, Ridley... I think he's a much more natural defender and seems to do it a lot. You know, he's just always done it from Mm. what we've seen. But, yeah, it's good to see him really coming on now. Well, that was one of mine. Who's someone you'd like to single out for a bit of praise? Um, Jaden Laverde, I yep. think, just another another one of those defenders who you know it's. I think it's made a, a huge difference to our defence this year. And actually, I'm going to double up on that as well and say Mason Redmond. Yeah, well, how good was that goal? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Seriously, got a hoof on him these days. What's 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 the horns? Do we know what the horns is about? I don't know, but I love it. Yeah, I mean, sh- I mean, I was thinking he's going to go the lobster like because the old man, but I was like, what's what what's the horns? Because it's red dog. Like people call him red dog, but it's like I thought it might have been taking the piss out of GWS. Okay, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I need some clarification I know they've, on that. They've done the bull before. Yeah, right. God, they're a shit club. They're such a pathetic club. <laughs> A bunch of fucking losers like yeah. Jeremy Finlayson. Jeremy Finlayson. Jeremy Finlayson, oh. the bloke who will always be the guy who had one kick in a grand final. Did he have one kick? In he a had grand? one kick in a grand final. Yeah. He had two disposals. Jeez, he's a, yeah. Like I, I, enjoy your week off, Jeremy. You fucking loser. Yeah, like I, I thought he was a like a talented player. Like I think I said this last last Thursday that when um 
when we played him down at the Dome a couple of years ago, the one that Kate Hooker, we stole the game. I was like, wow, this guy's really, really good. And I was expecting him to like come on and become the next thing, but he's just another lazy player from no, Western he's Sydney. Just, he's just, yeah, he's one of those lazy blokes who has all the talent in, in the world, but yeah, he's losing his hair. He's going to have, you know, I just think like, he's already starting to get a gut, which is um, pretty pretty phenomenal for someone who has to train, you know, six days a week. But, um, you know, each their own, so... No, he might be hanging out with Lockie Whitfield uh, after dark, getting up to no good. Yeah, oh, I think there's a few of those <laughs> in that club. There's not much else to do in Western Sydney. Um, back to Jaden. It's, like, it's, yeah. I mean, we, we, I feel like we've spoken about it every week for the last three weeks. It's just, I had him... In my, if you if you had a list of your guys who are most likely to leave the club at the end of the year for either that is not being offered a contract, they're getting you know delisted or retiring, whatever. I had him in that you know red zone group of guys. I'm like, I think there's a lot of problem mm. right now. Probably after Zach Merritt, I think he's probably my simply must sign. Like, really, I've like Gee, I, that's huge because we've got Paco sitting there unsigned as well. I thought he still had one, one more year. No, I'm pretty sure Paco needs to be signed. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I'll put him third then. But, yeah, it's – I don't know. He, he really just makes the back line uh, – I, I feel more comfortable with him in it. Um, and, like, yeah, he's, he's – I mean, I, I didn't see it, and it really is. It's It's got to be full credit to – I know that's, you know, such a footy, bullshit footy saying, but mm. it – it's such a huge credit to the coaching staff and to Rutten in particular in picking that because yep. I did not see him as a defender at no. all. Um, but he's played his best, by far and away, his best footy of his career um, down there. And, I mean, if you look at that mark he took, kind of going back <sighs> with a flight and over um, Toby Green, which is no you know, no small feat given how good he is with his body work. Yep. Um, yeah. it's His improvement has just been... Out of this world. I think he's our most improved for the year for mine. There's a few, but um, I think, you know, he he is by far and away our most improved. Uh, I'm just pulling up the player. And I only say that without saying it's Hindy because I feel like Hindy was at St Kilda, so he's not really our most improved. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you have to have had at least one full season here. And we've got to look. There's a long list of guys here who need to be signed. Um, Who else is in there? No, you're right. Yeah, okay. We do need to sign Jake Stringer. Um, well, he's look. He's top three for mine. If I'm looking at this, li- oh, sorry, Par- uh, Par- Paris needs to be signed. I thought we re-signed him. This website isn't updated. Anyway, is that the SNL website? No, this is um Footy Wire. But okay, well, no, nah, Footy Wire is pretty spot on. Okay, well then maybe we need to re-sign Paris as well. All right, plenty of signings well, I to be we done. Did. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. I need to be more attentive with the stuff. Um, Zach Merritt was inspired, I would say, in his 150th mm. game. Um, yeah. I would say I think he was he got the most coaches' votes, so probably best on ground. Yeah, um, thirteen inside fifties. I know a few of them in the first half were pretty. He butchers wayward. the ball these days, does Zach? Yeah, they were pretty wayward at times, but he, I think he's just effort around the ground and just consist- consistently being in the attacking chain mm. um, just showed how good he was playing. Um, but if he pulls up a few more of those, well, pulls up one more of those, it's probably a win, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He played. You know, it's another. Another champion game, I thought, from Zach, you know, notwithstanding some of his disposal early, as you, as you touched on. But he just, you know, he just seems to do it all um, so much of the time. And realistically, in that midfield, he's, I know Parrish had 36 as well. But, yeah, you know, he, he's playing, really playing probably our, our only midfielder who's playing an inside-outside role in that, yeah. as that stands. Like, there's no Dylan Sheil in there, obviously. No. Um, you know, Paco's injured himself and he's playing forward as well. So, um, you know, Caldwell would only really ever be, if he was in the team, would be playing that parish role as well. So yeah. he's got quite a distinctive role. Um, he's, you know, he just runs all day. He's such an accumulator. Um, he had the whole of GWS just trying to cheap shot him the whole day and it was pretty <sighs> frustrating to see yet again that mm. we just allowed Mummy to, you know... Mumfield puts uh, put his knees in his back at one stage, and it really, really pissed me off. And he f- yeah, he flattened him. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm really sick of? Mm. I'm sick of every time we play GWS, and basically every time Mumfield plays, I'm sick of the commentators having a fucking laugh about this big fat dog. <laughs> 
Just cheap. <laughs> just all he does is he cheap shots plays. He does it all the time, and he does it every time we play them to mm. Zach Merritt. It's and it's not good enough to have a bloke who's probably 120 kilos while Zach Merritt's on the ground just burying his knees into his back. Mm. It's just not good. It's a shit look for the game. But no, fuck the game. Like, he's just a dog. He oh, shouldn't no, be he allowed is. to do it. And the, and the worst thing is that the commentators just laugh it off and say, oh, there's mummy, you like, doing his thing. Mm. If, if the AFL was serious about all this, you know, concussion and CTS and all of these things, they wouldn't be allowing any of that kind of stuff to happen. They wouldn't be allowing, you know, Finn Layson to come through with an elbow and he might not have got him clean, but he came through with a friggin' elbow. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, it's, yeah. It should be the intent. That's, it's that, the intent yeah. and the action. It's not yeah. the fucking end result. It's that's what it. they've got so yeah. wrong. Mm. They've yeah. got it so wrong. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, was it was was it Mitch Duncan, the, the player where Mumford, like, got that amazing tackle on him? Yeah, yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Like, he is... Well, if th- you recall what Mumfield's done to us the past, like, three times we've Mum- played him. Mumford. You've said Mumfield, like, Mumfield. three times. <laughs> yeah, the, f- the first one I let you slide, I was like, whatever, and then you've said it three more times. Yeah. Blumfield, <laughs> yeah. Mumfield. Blumfield, Mumfield. No, um, but you're right. Like, there's... there's but, he, but he's been, uh, like... Not only doing, you know, the knees in the back type stuff. Like a but he does it to everybody. Up, he doesn't just do it to us. He does it to every single it's, team. But it's it's the raising the elbows, like the yeah. coat hangers, that kind of stuff, which yeah. are near misses, which he's just never been pulled up for. And yeah. the reason why he continues to do it is because he doesn't get pulled up. Yeah. And it's not. It's just not good enough. Well, look, if if one of those... Like if, I would have I would have loved if Draper was out there playing and mm. Draper would have smacked would have smacked Finn Lyson. Mm. Finn Lyson would have no doubt been running in the other direction. Mm. And you know, in fairness, he did run in the other direction from the ball for the rest of the game. <laughs> and he did. But it would have been great if we had someone there, him and Patty Ambrose, or just anyone to go and remonstrate. You yeah. know, after any of those Mumf- Mumford, Mumford cheap Mumford, shots, Mumford, Mumfield cheap shots, Mumfield, yes. Or, you know, the Finn Lason one. Because I didn't see anyone go to Finn Lason. I actually saw Paco have a crack at, at Mumford at one stage. That's good. And that was about it. That's good. Yeah, I need I need, need, need to see uh, a bit bit more of that. Um, yeah, fuck. It's, uh, yeah, they're dogs. The raise, the raise, like, this thing. I'm okay with someone, like, going for a mark and sticking, a, like, a knee in the back of someone. Like, that's part, part of the game. That's You're part protecting of, yourself. Yeah, that's exactly, fine. exactly part of the game. But, like, the raised elbow, when the ball's long past you, like... That's as low as it gets. The hip, the hip would non, like not even looked at, is one of the biggest farces I've ever seen. Yeah, it's an absolute joke, and you know you follow follow that after obviously Heaney getting cleared for punching Zerk Thatcher in the head, or Zerk Thatcher, sorry, getting cleared for being on the receiving end of a punch to the head, um, for not breaking Heaney's hand. It wasn't his fault. They found so, yeah. you know the the inconsistencies are just uh, it's. It's a long list of farcical decisions by by the AFL and by you know by those in power. Yep, we could we could go on for a long time about them. Um, someone else who I thought had a really good game was um, I thought Will Selling's game was really good. Yep, um, it was quite funny seeing uh, both the demos as they're, as they're known in our in our thread both say how they've really come around to like him, having mm. once potted him quite a lot. Um, two goals and three goal assists. Mm. Um, like really clean by foot. Usually we talk about his pressure intensity. Like that was still okay. But um, I thought his actual, his ball use, which is where he's been criticised a lot, was at, 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 like the best yeah, I've, I've seen see, from him. I've, I've always thought his ball use is really good. The way, if you actually look at like his technique, his kicking technique, it's it's beautiful. Oh, the technique's, guy, technique's fine. It down perfectly. Technique's fine, but like he has been known to, like a lot of our players, you know, turn yeah. it over quite consistently around that, you know, the 50 mark. Yeah, I think I think he's probably another one of those confidence players, as a lot of them are. Um, I, I think the best thing for him is that he's just actually starting to get get the footy as he should, and he's starting to actually lay tackles and mm. you know really get into the game and keep it up. Because previously, criticism for me was just that you'd just go missing for you know weeks and weeks, and then you know every so often, every maybe once a month, he'd play an outstanding game and he'd keep him inside, but mm. he just wasn't doing enough. And yeah. now he's actually really starting to his to his credit, he's starting to string some games together. He's playing that pressure role that we need alongside Devin Smith, who I think is yep. actually starting to play some good forty for us as well. Yeah, and if you look at our tackling numbers this year, it's it's a you know result of those guys and their pressure. So um, yeah, I think it's 
one, it's again, I think it's a whole lot to do with um, with Rutten's coaching and what mm. what kind of footy he's spoken a lot about us playing, you know, kind of a blue collar, mm. wanting us to play a blue collar brand of footy, and I think you know Snelling's probably someone who benefits from that. I think the number one blue collar footy player was the sub Mac Welfie. He was um, outstanding. He's he played one of the best sub games you you're likely to ever see. He was possessed. He was possessed. He, he, had was eight, he had eight disposals in the last quarter. Did he? Zach Merritt was the only one on the ground with more than him with ten. Wow. Yeah, like did everything. Kicked a goal. That um, goal was fantastic as yeah. well. I didn't think he had it in him. Yeah, yeah, on the run I was like, oh. It was smooth. Yeah. He looked so good. Yeah, I mean it was like, you know, Thursday, um, if, if you have listened to it, man, um, Jason Johnson, who was on our promo show. Oh, actually, I was going to start off with complimenting you on that. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, – that's certainly one of the one of the best ones we've ever had. I reckon. Man, he was unreal. Um, I'll, was so easy. I'll yeah, I'll put a clip on the um the free feed for people who haven't heard it yet as a bit of promo. Um, I've had a bit of a busy few days, so I haven't had a chance yet. But that was one of the better chats we've had. Like it's look, it's so good when you get someone actually come into the studio. They can be themselves. They can be comfortable. A couple of VBs. A couple helps. of VBs into them helps yeah. them get into it. Like you know, Lovey was the same. Like really, sort of just relax and let loose and told some funny stories. And I know Jason's just really like a bloke's bloke. Yeah, um, very like, down to earth. Just so chill, like yeah. happy to happy to like take take the piss, happy to like let us bag him a little bit and like throw a little bit of shit out there, and like he was a great sport. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely one of the best we've had, and um, looking forward to getting um, a few more people on throughout the year. So that was mm. um, really good. But back to Guelph, um, yeah, did not think he had the kick in him. Jason was the reason I brought that up was like saying how he had really big raps for him from what he'd seen from him this year. Like, again, like a Will Snelling, really just kind of floats in and had floating out of the side for the last sort of few years. He played some good games, played some bad games. Like, the one thing I've always liked about Guelphie is, is his intensity. I think he's really hard at the footy. Yeah, um, that's like a key part of his game. Tough, tough guy. And then, again, it's, it's the skills and execution that sort of lacks from him. Like, again, didn't, see, didn't think he had that goal. Most tackles for an Essendon player came out as a, as a sub. Glass half full, well done to Mac Welfy. Glass half empty is is that not people not, not the rest of the side not doing well enough, or is it just easy to get tackles at the sub when you're a bit fresher? He had he had eight tackles, so like it's six, pretty, six. Oh really? Six tackles. I thought it was eight. Yes, yeah, it was six. Um, Tarano had eight, so he had six. Nick Cox had five, which is great. And there was a handful of fours, and then it kind of drops off out of there. So mm. yeah, I mean, there's a look. There's a few guys in this side who didn't have any tackles. Obviously, some of the big guys, but. We'll, We'll get into some negatives later in the show. But, yeah, depend, if you want to go glass half full, glass half any, half full. Well done, Guelphy. Awesome effort. Glass half, or, you know, whatever. Bad. I I'm, t- I'm tired. I need dinner. I can't speak. Negative side is you go, why didn't a player play to four quarters to get more than that? So I reckon, yeah, I reckon one of our KPIs under truck would, would be that. Yeah. It'd be the tackles. I think there's going to our key coach. Yeah, dogs. exactly. And like, there's a, there was a lot of things out of that game that you know weren't perfect. Like we didn't win the game. Like we might be positive, but we didn't win the game. Execution was the obvious one, but I think yeah, he would still be like yeah, a few our, blokes who didn't do enough. I've just I just feel like the last two weeks because we have played a noticeably different game plan probably prior to that, and like we are still playing very different footy to what we did last year. Thank God, but. I feel like the last two weeks we've kind of, you know, almost regressed back to that um, whooshy game plan, certainly in terms of our forward entries. Yeah, the long bombs. We seem to be getting it to a certain point and then, you know, just bombing it to absolutely no one or just generally mishitting our targets. And the worst part of it and the worst kick is that kind of long floating kick into the forward line that doesn't actually go deep into the forward line. It sits about, you know... 35, 40 metres out, mm. and it's just so easy to rebound. It's not even really threatening. Yeah. So I think there's – yeah, that, that's a that's a huge concern for me. Yeah, there's plenty, plenty there. A um, few more positives. You, you spoke about Nick Hyam really briefly really off the top. but I'll, I feel I'll, like we haven't done him, you know, let's justice this year because he's had 29 disposals sitting at the halfback flank. Electric. Let's talk about him v Sardi because this <laughs> is just, you know, I'd almost take – actually, I'm, I would. I'm happy to say that I would take a, you know, close loss that really shouldn't have been a loss and we take mm. a lot out of that game. I would take that if it meant that Carlton are up by six goals and then have, 
or however many goals they were up by. They weren't up by six, but thirty odd points. Have, yeah. have the nine last goals of the game kicked against them, and you know, just absolutely rudderless. And uh-huh. also have their prize recruits contribute nothing. Well, I I always knew that Zach Williams was going to be garbage because I've Zach Williams has never been good anyway. Well, like I've I I've a Carlton insider, and they told me they said he is the laziest player in that list. Yeah, it's like when like, you're training, like won't he just do does the bare minimum? He'll sit like at the back of the group when you're doing laps. He will like won't exert himself when they're doing like kicking drills, whatever it may be. He's like he is the laziest recruit ever. Mm. He's clearly just gone. Yep. I've got my big contract. You're stuck with me now. Yeah, well, it's like, over over a hundred hundred k per possession if you're going off his um <laughs> his salary last last game. So money well spelled, well spent again, Carlton. Maybe mm. you should concentrate on growing you on your own because you never have. <laughs> Sam Walsh was good, but yeah, back to uh, back to Crips wasn't. <laughs> yeah, back back to um. I mean, I said I said we were going to stop talking about those blokes, but I feel like when we're going to pot, up, pot them, we can. Um, let's talk about Sardi for a second. Let's, yeah, he was garbage. Let's compare the pair. He was can garbage. Get up Sardi, I'll get up Hindy. Um, all right. Well, I, was, I got, I got Hindy was 29, 29 disposals. Where is it? Twenty nine disposals. I think seventy eight percent efficiency. All right, here we go. I'm getting this. Is, this is great podcasting right here. Twenty two <laughs> kicks, five marks, one tackle, seven handballs, uh, seventy nine dis. 70, 79% disposal efficiency. Uh, six contested. Pretty. <laughs> what, was, what, was it, what was his efficiency? 79%. Wow. That's almost double what I've got here. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, 450 metres gained as well. 12, 12, 12 disposals. 10, 12. 10 kicks. 12. Going at 42%. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, six turnovers. You love that. <laughs> you love to see that. Um 339 metres gained. Oh, yeah. There we so go. That's uh, pretty pathetic. Uh, freeze against, three. Mm. Um, rebound 50s, three. Um, that's about where it goes. Oh, yeah, we have one score involvement. So there you go. Well, well, well done, Sadie. Oh, you, it's, you, it's you, good you, to you see. You got involved in something. Yeah. It's good to see that um, he's gone and he's playing, finally found that success at another club that he's been <laughs> yearning for all these years. So Somewhat, uh, I was. I expect, <laughs> he'll, I expect the, uh, the papers will be through for him transferring to Melbourne in you know in coming days <laughs> I now. I to say someone oh, I was on the I was on the Sash Twitter account just like reading what people were saying I think this morning or last night or whenever it was. And someone just put up a picture of Adam Saad and just said breaking news, Adam Saad request transfer to yep. to, to Melbourne. And I I can't it's coming. It. Whoever whoever it's said that well coming. well done. Yeah, go 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 for four clubs, Adam. You deserve it. Go for yeah. four clubs. Um Good on you, bud. Anyone else you want to throw in the good pile before we take a break and then we'll come back with the bads? Um, you know what? Kyle Langford's second half. Yeah, his first half was We'll talk about the first Atrocious. half after the break. <laughs> yeah, the second half was great. Like that last goal that he kicked to um, I didn't know we could do that. No. And even like that that fifty meter goal was fantastic. So I felt like in because of Stringer going down, I felt like he got the opportunity to play again in that half forward role. And we saw it last year and we'd seen it before where the place he excelled the most was his ability to lead up and mark. He's a big dude and go back and slot them. He's like, he's a very good set shot for goal. Yeah. Um, and obviously when String is in the forward line, he kind of gets pushed back into the, the mm. midfield sort of role yeah. because, you know, the reality is Paco's more dangerous forward. You know, you're not going to move out any of the bigger guys. Tiff and Morty, you're not going to move out as well. So there isn't really room for him there yeah. with the other guys who are there, but went forward, took some good marks, great looked great in front of goal, and now begs the question, it's like, can we – like, I think with Stringer out, I think you keep him there, yeah. and then you give someone else more midfield minutes. Mm. Um, but it's interesting going forward how that dynamic works. Like it's always good to know the players can play in different roles, but yeah. Yeah, I mean – I wouldn't be opposed to because I'm just I'm quite interested with the balance of the side we've got in at the moment mm. because we seem to have and it's changed a little bit um, not having Ned Carl inside but yeah you know we seem to have all these guys who are you know well and truly sub six foot running around you know around the forward line kind of kind of area and they're more or less playing the same role so I just wonder 
you know, whether we can say, you know, take a Snelling out of there and play him up the field a mm. bit more or a Devin Smith because we, we know we have done that in the past. Yeah. Or even just rotate with Langford because I think at the moment Langford, you know, is, is not playing good footy up the ground. So No, definitely not this year, no. No. So um, one more positive for you. Yep, go. I thought Phillips was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was really good. He competed really, really well against that fat piece of shit, and um, I thought he was really strong around the contest. Like he took some great marks. He did everything he needed to do. I thought. Yeah. No. Completely. Like, you know, there are a few people who were sort of like a bit upset that we, you know, didn't play. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Didn't play um, Brian. But like, I always felt it's just like if Phillips is fit, you got to play him in in this game in particular because the reality is. Brian just won't win any stoppage hit outs. Um, but yeah, did what he needed to do, follow up well. He's just a good pressure player, Phillips. Like he mm. keeps midfield. Yeah, his follow up work is great. And like you talk about you talk about Mumford being big and a fat piece of shit, but Andrew Phillips is big, musc- muscular freak. Like he is huge. He's, yeah, he's like, so uh, like y- y- you forget that. Mm. Um, especially when he's also playing fullback at the same time. But the problem is, you know, he is just a monster of a dude, throws his weight around. Um, and yeah, did what he needed to do. Like I think this, the clearances were almost equal mm. um, throughout the ground, and they've obviously got some real good talent, you know, extractors there, um, and just shows that he was influencing the game enough to give us first use when we needed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Parrish also had thirty six, but I didn't, I didn't think he had a particularly huge influence on the game. No, I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, I accumulated the ball, didn't find him to be pretty damaging. Um, He's another one who I think needs to work in his disposal moving forward. Yeah, got a few clearances, um, yeah. which was pretty good. I mean, Andy McGrath actually got the most clearances of the game, which was good. But again, yeah, just didn't feel like they were damaging enough with it. Um, look, I'm in with Parrish. Like I said a few weeks ago after the Anzac Day game, like I really want to see him just continually having big games even when we lose. And he's getting a lot of the ball, which is a good sign. But I still want him to be like impacting the game heavily um, even when, the, you know, the game's not going our way. But, yeah. yeah, can't fold him too much. More just like watch this space kind of thing with him. Let's take a breather um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a bit more about the negative side of things. Yeah. While we take a break from today's show, if you're thinking about doing a bit of work on the home, maybe it's that man cave you've always wanted or potentially there's a little baby bomber in the way and you need some money for a renovation, Speaking Finance can help you out. They can help you get that personal loan to make sure your renovation is as smooth as Jordan Ridley in the back line. Uh, Murdy, are you planning on any uh, builds, mate? Maybe that shrine to Joe Watson you've been talking about? Yeah, well, I, I could again if I if I get some get some money behind me. Exactly, you need exactly. money to do these things, mate. Exactly, and the people to do that are Speaking Finance. So make sure you give Steve uh, a call or an email at Speaking Finance. Visit speakingfinance.com.au and they will help you out. Speaking Finance is an authorised credit representative on Fintelligence PTY Ltd. Australian Credit Licence five one one eight zero three. All righty, let's get back into the podcast. All right, let's chat. The negatives, Murdy. Mm, the okay. negative. Um, we'll start with Kyle Langford's first I'm first half. We'll start with Kyle Langford's first half. His yeah. first half was awful. R- ratchet. Though I was like, the first turnover, I was like, oh, Kyle's had a bit of a bad Should we one. put a swear warning on this episode? Oh, I mean, we, we, we swear a lot as it is. I mean, you know. Well, we it, can do it more if we do. Yeah, I mean, look, I like to keep it in reason. I don't want, like, I understand, like, when we're talking about like a player like Shane Mumford, I feel like it's fair to to swear. Or, or you're talking about the AFL or the match review panel or my Christian. Fair enough. Um, I feel like we need to be a bit more you know, tactical about when we use swear words. What about Fox Sports? Just in um, yeah, yeah. Everyone, few swear words to say about that. Everyone except for Sarah Jones because uh, she's, she's a, a saint. She's got our back. The rest of them. In the bin. Sarah Jones is the same. Sarah Jones is the same. The rest of them are in the bin. Yeah. Um, Kyle Langford's first half, this, yeah, turnover after turnover after turnover, which I think is probably why they moved him forward because he clearly was just so bad. Um, that was enough about Kyle. I, my, uh, there's two players that I'm concerned about at the moment. Donny. We'll get to the second one. We'll start with Donny. Braden Ham, the little pig. I think his last few weeks have been really poor. I'm a mm. massive fan of uh, Braden. I think after Anzac Day, maybe the week before, I was really singing his praise. Talking about, I think Anzac Day it was, was Anzac Day. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about the, the, you know the work of you know, him on one side, Cox on the other, and what it did. But uh, the last two weeks, I think he's on the chopping block for mine. Um, zero tackles. Um, he turned the footy over quite a fair bit. 
went at fifty percent by foot for the game. Um, this is the thing. Now that we've had another injury to the side with you know string going down, we you know we don't have the luxury of just being able to you know drop bloke knowing you've got someone who's pushing for a spot. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of guys in the VFL who are just you know so raw and so far off it. They're just not going to be factored in at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then there's a handful of blokes who could come in. So if we were in a if we were in a better position list wise, I think he's on the chopping block. Mm. I think because we don't have many other options, I think he's probably going to stay in the side. Um, but I, I need to see more from him. Like mm. the pressure wasn't there. The skills were down. Um, I know what he can do. and We've seen it before, but he's had a real poor few weeks and it wasn't just this game. This is like the second week in a row now. So um, little hams on my chopping block. Yeah, I think, I think he has to be a, a bit better if he's going to play that outside role. And I was actually quite surprised. I think it was the Anzac Day game mm. where he, he did – a fair bit of inside work as well. Yeah. He played very much an inside-outside role, and I think he would have been starting on the wing. But, you know, when he got a chance to lay a tackle, he did. Um, and I hadn't really seen that part of his game. But for the last two weeks, he seems to have really regressed. And, mm. you know, it's kind of that, you know, if you're playing a purely outside role, then you can't be missing targets like that. No. Um, no. And it's just kind of... I don't know what it was because it seemed like we were – the past two weeks we just seemed to have been really fumbly. Like even Darcy Parrish has been fumbly and I've never seen that bloke fumble the ball in his life. Yeah. So basically everyone except for Coxie has been fumbly. So <laughs> um, I don't know what it is because it's, it's definitely hurting our disposal as well. But um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think unicorns can uh, drop the ball. So that's probably with um, Coxie. But um, one <sighs> – yeah, Braden's a funny one. Look, let, let's chat about the skipper because if you look at the socials, and I do, I read them, see what the faithful say. You know, some opinions are bad, some opinions are good. I mean, my opinions are bad, but people listen to this podcast. Um, Dyson Heppel is drawing a lot of attention from a lot of people for the way he's playing football. Um mm. You can tell that he's off the pace. Um, having come back from you know the ankle and the foot and all the other injuries he's had, he definitely looks slow. Um, you know the efforts there and desires there, and I'm never going to question that for Dyson. Like you always know he's having a crack, but he's very very slow, and his skills are not good enough that he can get away with it. Yeah, I, I mean. I think he's always been slow to start with. Like it's he been looks a, slower than he looks slower than he does, and he like I think that's just. He looks. He's always looked lethargic as well because mm. that's just how he is. He's never going to be that explosive breakaway player. Yeah. Um, that being said, I think you're right, and you know, I, I think people have perhaps idealised this idea of him um, playing on a halfback flank for a fair while now. I think like mm. his first year of footy, he played off the halfback flank, and he's great at it. His first couple, yeah, but, yeah. Um, then he moved into the midfield, and I mean. I feel like he's one who you almost move him. I'd like to see him played up the ground a bit more because, again, it's that kind of like in the midfield. You saying, or are you saying a not forward? in the midfield? He doesn't. He doesn't command a midfield position, but half forward um, or no nah, on a wing. On I a wing, that's the only other position on the field you can play him. Okay, so I'd play him on the wing because the other thing is, you know, you want your wingers to be good overhead. That's like the Coxie he, is, which he is generally, he yes, is. yes. And the other thing about wingers is they get a chance to drift forward. And, mm. you know, Heppel, although he hasn't by any means kicked a whole lot of goals, he has shown the ability to move forward and kick goals. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind seeing that because, like you say, and like we said with Francis, when you're risking some of those kicks, and, I mean, he's never been the best kick in the team by any means. So yeah. when you're risking a slow kick um, that's not that penetrating – from the halfback flank or from deep in defence, then you're really risking exposure. Yeah, yeah. You're risking exposing the defence again from the rebound. So Yeah, well, like, there was the one where, you know, the oh, the first year player, Tanner Bruin, literally, like, they were neck and neck with each other. Tanner Bruin got the ball and just burnt Heppel. Yeah. Just straight away went off him. It was just completely off the pace yeah. at that point. And this is the thing. You can think about like, across the across the league, across like the last teams of AFL, where there's been a lot of teams who will, I wouldn't say carry, they'll have an older halfback player who might have really good skill but might not be slow. Think of like Brendan Goddard in his final year for us. Heppel is one who's not that old yet, mm. and he isn't doesn't got the 
you know, the pinpoint bullet that a Brent no, Goddard doesn't. once had. So you start to look there and it's like, yeah, we know what he brings from a leadership perspective. Like the players want him to be captain. You know, he obviously brings something there. There's stuff that we will never see that he, he does to that team. He goes hard. He leads by example in that sense. But he's letting us down for his pace and he's letting us down for his skills. Yeah. Um, and it's been a couple of weeks in this. I've had a few people been like, oh, when are you going to talk about Heps? And I'm just like, let's give him a bit more time. Yeah. But now I'm starting to go, I'm concerned about him. Yeah. And I think the, I think the other thing is, it's a question of whether we actually need him played in that position. Because what I feel like it is at the moment is it's trying to find a position to keep him in the in the team, basically. Which is a bad, which is a bad which situation. Is a wor- which is a horrible situation. And, and when your skipper's in your bottom three or four players for the, yeah, for the round. Yeah. I mean, but what I mean by that is we've got, you know, Jordan Ridley, Aaron Francis, Mason Redman, who are all playing a pretty similar position. You know, Redman's probably going a bit smaller than those other two guys, but yeah. they're more the, you know, third kind of tall. Now, when, you know, you chuck in a couple of, um, you know, ideally a couple of key, like proper keys into that side and then yeah. I, I just don't – like the, the, the defence just seems – it seems really imbalanced to me mm. if you've got Heppel in there because we've got guys who can play that role and play it probably a lot better than he can. None mm. of those guys are slow. No. Um, and, yeah, I, I just don't think – I think it's to the detriment of the team actually playing him in that role over someone else like that. Okay. Like, where – like, did you did you like it when Devin Smith was playing off the halfback flank? Hated it. Okay. Not a fan. No. Who – so who – in the current outfit, who's the player that you would be putting into that role to be, you know, be a half backman if you're going to be pushing him up the ground? So where, if if you've got your, your chessboard in front of you, your jigsaw piece, what are you going to call it? Who who's getting moved around for this to occur under the you know guys? You have to keep Heppel in the side. Yeah, um, what's getting moved? Yeah, I mean it's a tough question. Um, obviously, because we're talking about our captain there, but yeah. I'd probably more move the back line around to, you know, you get a Ridley playing up the ground or, or a Mason Redman up the ground. Yeah. Um, you know, we've seen how good Redman can be, how damaging he can be. Mm. And obviously Ridley's probably the best kick in our side, you know, maybe other than, than Tipper. Yeah. So I'd, I don't see, you know, why you couldn't, um, you know, get him up on a wing um, push one of those, I don't know, even like even even one of those smaller guys, push them back, push back one of the good users of the footy. Yeah. And I know, you know, this won't be supported by anyone now and I don't actually, you know, support this idea <laughs> either myself anymore. But at the start of the year, and if you recall 2016, which was the first year that Tipper played. He played off the halfback flank. He played off the halfback flank and he, he was did, our best yeah. user. And yeah. at the start of this year, when I saw Ned Carl starting in a back on a back flank, I was like, what are we doing here? Mm. Like, if we're going to do it with anyone, then let's do it with Tipper, who can actually use the ball. Yeah. He's explosive. He's crazy yeah. skillful. But, and he opens the game up. But there's no way we ever going to do that. No, we're not going to do that. Yeah, like he, he keeps he kicking bags of goals and he's the most dangerous small forward. If not our only small forward, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, but who who have we got back there? Because you chuck in Jaden Laverde there, then you've got yeah, he, you've but, got four guys who are basically six foot three mm. playing the same position. Heppel probably six foot two. Uh, I don't think. I think that's. And then we've got Zach Reid, who's going to come come into the side at some stage this year. You'd hope. I'll give you one. Paddy Ambrose is in the twos. I know he's playing up forward, but would you put? Uh, Andy McGrath back to defence. Yes, I would. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's the one. Bang. Yeah, yeah, done. There we go. Solving the world's problems. Solving the world's problems one thing at a time. What? Because that's like, it's, I mean, look. Right now, now, now that we've got injuries in our midfield, I think you, you kind of probably need to keep McGrath there. But it is a thing of going. All right, let's look ahead. You know, to next year or the future or where it's going to be. Mate, Let's Chuck say Shields, Coxie in the guts. Chuck, yeah, well, Coxie's going to be our rover in a couple few weeks' time. I so. actually reckon he could do it. He tackles like a madman. His hands are, the, mm. I reckon, the best in our team. I reckon they're now better than Parrish's, as I said before. <sighs> his call. work in traffic is incredible. That big call, and he's two hundred centimeters. Yeah, he's a I wouldn't, I wouldn't just mind seeing it toyed with, even if he's just starting as you know a centre or a ruck rover or something, just for a couple. Just, just for a bounce. Just get him in there. Just get him in there and just go – just put him – get him to stand next to someone. Yeah. Just to freak him out. Well, <laughs> get him against like – oh, 
You know what's going to happen this yeah. week? He'll go against five. <laughs> nah, Arch, Archie's going to go against five. Yeah, oh, that's hot. He's going to and he's going to teach him a lesson. He's going to teach him a lesson. Um, but look, but back to the back to the, the McGrath Heppel thing. It's like if, if you're looking ahead to the future of this team, and that's what we're going to be doing a lot this year. And um, you go, all right, where, where does this team look like when it's going to be pushing and damaging for finals? Is it next year? Is it a year after that? Who's factoring in where? And if you put the full strength side out, um, and shout out to the gentleman message the page about this because he said to me, what is if every if Sheila's fit, if Caldwell's fit, Paco's fit, what does our midfield look like? Maybe it's the potential where, yeah, McGrath moves back to halfback flank because he you knows he's there so that Coldwell and Shield can get minutes and Parrish can get minutes. Yeah. Um, does it mean that Paco is going to stop playing in the midfield if you're giving Perkins minutes or is someone coming out to a wing? There's a, lot, think, of, there's think, a lot of questions I that think you've got the about way, I think the way, just on that Paco one, I think the way Paco is going to be played from now off from now on is center starting, bounce and then center just, bounce and then forward. Yeah, which I which I'm I think totally they've for. just found his niche there. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, but no, I'm totally for that. As as to the other guys, like I was actually thinking last year, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have minded at times having McGrath just go back to a half back or even a back pocket because yeah. if you recall how he played on Eddie Betts when Eddie Betts was actually good playing incredible football, he's the only one who could shut him down. Mm. So. You know, Freo this this weekend have a number of good smalls, a number of good young blokes. Mm. I I don't know. Is is um Walters playing this week? He's been playing, hasn't he? Uh, I don't know. He it's, might. He it's might. good good yeah. non essendon knowledge. Yeah, in these parts. So yeah, just I'll, rest easy with us listeners. It's yeah. Good. Well, I usually do my um opposition prep during the week. Um. Yeah. Look, I'll give you the Walt- red hot though. He will be dropping his knees. I was going to say he, he he might still be at the diving championships. In, old Michael Walters. In, so. Incoming dog of the week. For Walters. <laughs> yeah. Pre <laughs> pre dog of the week for next week to Michael yeah. Walters. Um. No, he did play. Trav Collier played as well. Um. I'm sure Matt Tabin is getting excited to kick his yearly f- five goals that he kicks against Essendon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, might have a chat. There's actually – we've now got a, a free podcast amongst the uh, the Horde stable, so I might I might give those boys a win. How? How? Hit them up. I saw they were doing some good work. Who, who goes for Freo? Apparently well, – pe- people over there, mate. Get get over there. No. Tom Marcazani's living over there now. Apparently it's a busy <laughs> place. <laughs> He's living in Fremantle. So. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on. Um, shout out to our WA listeners <laughs> as well who are listening. A um, couple of things to round off with. Uh, we know Stringer we, is hammy. We do. That's a good point, though. We do have a great support base over there. We have, an, we have, a, we have a great support base anywhere. I'm mm. sure we probably outnumbered the giant supporters uh, on Saturday afternoon. Um, Jai it, Col- was, it was just on that. It was great to see Jeremy Finlayson shush his own supporters after <laughs> kicking a goal. That's right. Well, no, but you I, absolute dead shit. I think, yeah, I'm assuming that was directed at the Eshin Cheer Squad, but it does. Yeah, it's a pretty poor look. Yeah. <laughs> you have to shush <laughs> get your home game because there's keep, su- such a little yeah. cheer. Keep keep sending those DMs, you loser. Yeah, he's in uh, John Patton territory. Um, Jai Caldwell has done another hamstring, having hamstring surgery. We will not see him again this mm. year. That is my. That's annoying. That's very annoying. Might be another David Myers type situation, which well, is let's a bit hope not. sad. Um, um, touch wood, but yeah. yeah. On better news, Paco's one to two weeks. Paco's apparently. one to two so weeks. Um, any Pilates or yoga instructors want to just slide into Jai Cobble's DMs and teach him about some nice hammy stretches? Be, be careful what you're inciting there, Rob, because he's a he's another pretty good looking man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is all above board. I'm talking about just like helping him out with his cool. hamstrings, yeah. do some yoga, do some Pilates, yep. cheeky uh, finger, <laughs> whatever you whatever you want to do. I don't know what goes on at your Pilates classes there, Murdy. Uh, and on that note, I think we should wrap up the show for a Monday Eve. Is Zach Raid back? No, nah, he's got glandular fever. But how long for? Indefinite. What do you mean? It's glandular fever. I don't know. I got over glandular three weeks in Thailand. It just needs to go to Thailand Is for three weeks. weeks. Go well, to a full moon party. Well, actually, funny you say that. Someone shared, again, this is me just being on. Lost 17 kilos, mind you. This is me on a 17 kilos. Yeah. Zach Carey doesn't have 17 kilos to lose, mate. He blows away in the wind as it is. Um, someone posted on, I think it was on the Essendon Twitter. Um, I don't mean the official one. I just mean everyone, the sash. Account yeah, follows, yeah. which is what the I good, call yeah. Essendon Twitter, the, the realm. Uh, someone posted something about Zach Reed was just out on a boat, just like hanging out on a lake and was just like just chilling out there. And he's like, isn't this guy meant to be homesick in bed? And someone was like, you say he can't get out in the sun? Yeah. Let's just go and have fun. So maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's getting a bit of vitamin D. Maybe that's what you it's need for Glendale. 
I've I think, never had. I actually think I drinking's really good for it because it just basically <laughs> kills all the bacteria. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this stuff just did, happens to be my solution to most things. <laughs> didn't realize Doctor Nuff had rolled in yeah. <laughs> just to, just to no, prescribe. He's, he's yeah. always around. Double double vodka and soda, please. Okay, thanks, Doctor Nuff. Uh, on that note. No, it's double vodka Fanta. Double vodka Fanta, Jesus, yeah, right. that is fighting juice. It's one of the best drinks in the world. <laughs> that is, that is why anyone ever sees. It's normally cans of Fanta because you can't get it anywhere anymore. But yeah. if you ever see a can of Fanta in the bottom of the fridge at a pub or wherever you are, trust me, <laughs> just <laughs> just get it, just get it. Double vodka Fanta, and it, it'll change your life. And if you see an Essendon player out and you offer to buy him a drink. Buy them a double vodka fan up. That's what you're getting. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Nothing else. It's the, That's the new Sash cocktail. Um, yeah, on that note, listeners, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Thanks to all the people who are our premium subscribers via the Horde. We appreciate you guys supporting this show. Thanks to our sponsors as well for today's show. And, yeah, go Dons.